Robin Long and I'm one of the deacons here. At their October 19th meeting, council voted to continue following CDC guidelines. And that means that while transmission rates are low or medium, masks in the sanctuary are optional. Those online, please remain muted during responsive and unison prayers. Those online are invited to remain after the service for Zoom fellowship time. We will have coffee and tea in the fellowship hall zucchini bread, and some cookies. So you're invited to join us there. The choir practices at 9.15 on Sunday mornings. All are welcome to join. Starting this month and through the cold months, we will be setting the third Sunday of the month aside to take monetary donations to augment the minister's discretionary fund. If you would like to donate to this important fund, please notate it on the bottom of your check. Some upcoming meetings are... The deacons will meet on Friday the 13th at 12 noon. Trustees will meet on Wednesday, January 18th at 12, at 12 p.m. And it's questioning if this might be Zoom only. I don't know if anybody can see Zoom only. Zoom only, okay. Outreach will meet on Thursday, January 19th at 4 p.m. And council will meet on Friday, January 20th at 12 p.m. Are there any announcements from the congregation or um, in person or on Zoom? I'd just like to say that uh, if anyone tried to get into the service last week, it was our first attempt doing an exchange um, remote. And unfortunately, we had no heat here in the sanctuary, so we had to turn people away. And then in Hingham, Mass, 
their sound system was down. So things did not run as smoothly as we hoped. Oh, we will try it again. If anybody would like a set of offering envelopes for the coming year, please see me after church. Offering envelope, see David. Is that all the announcements? Um, so we've got some January birthdays and anniversaries. Um, on the 6th, Aaron Erlenbach Collins had a birthday. And on the 7th, Sally Bryant had a birthday. And also John Wood had a birthday on the 7th. The 7th was... Um, also, Peter and Sally Bryant's anniversary. On the 9th, um, tomorrow, Rebecca Filio will have a birthday, and on the 12th will be Myrna Coffin's birthday. The 16th will be Everett and Vicki Espling's anniversary. I don't know which, how, how many years? Hunt's um, birthday, and on the 23rd, Ava Belhaven has a birthday. Let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Church and the community as your authentic self, 
beloved and cherished, respected and accepted. No matter who you love, no matter where you were born, no matter your work in the world, no matter the color of your skin, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome in our sanctuary and online. Thank you for joining us, whichever way is best for you. This morning, you are invited to participate in the epiphany tradition of star words. I'd like to thank Peggy Eady for bringing this tradition to us years ago, and for Peggy and Mary Beth DeMarco for keeping the tradition alive this year. If you are in the sanctuary, you may get up at any time during the service and take a star from the basket, which our back work at Summer is showing us right now, near the bulletins when you walk in. Um, you can get up at any time, as I said, both sides of the aisle back there, or as you're returning from communion, it might be a nice time to stop there. If you are online, you may put a message in the chat or contact me after the service. We'll get a star word to you. I encourage you to pause and be present to what is before you, to pay attention, and let your star word choose you. And then be present to the word each day. Pay attention to how or what or when that word, thought, or idea is speaking to you throughout the year. I wonder where your star word will lead you this year. Now please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our intro here in this place, verse 3, which is in our bulletins. Singing, love divine, all loves excel in our red hymnal, 
Winners of Fruit and Life, number 404. Still speaking, God, as these words in Scripture are not read. May they be to us as if the heavens are opening, and we see your Spirit descending on us like a dove, revealing your love for us. Amen. I think I'll stand here for the children's message since. We don't have any younger ones in the room with us. And I'll be seen on camera better with the community people there. So this book by Barbara Brown Taylor is called Home by Another Way. Christmas Story. Based on Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Once upon a time, there were three very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each one of them. The star was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their own imaginations, but they were wise enough to know it did not matter all that much. The point was, something beyond them was calling them, and it was a tug they had been waiting for all their lives. Each in his own country had tried books, 
tried magic, tried astrology. One had lived on nothing but dried herbs boiled in water. Another had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and write in an ancient language. A third had learned to walk on hot coals, though it did nothing for him beyond the great sense of relief he felt at the end. Despite their best efforts, all three of them still felt that something was missing. They were all glad for a reason to get out of town, which was clearly where the star was calling them. Out, away from everything they knew how to manage and survive. Out from under the reputations they had built for themselves, the high expectations, the disappointing returns. And so they set out, one by one, each believing that he was the only one with a star in his eye, until they all ran into one another on the road to Jerusalem. From a distance, each thought the other was a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to one another, they saw the star they had in common, like a tattoo or a secret handshake, something that made them brothers before they spoke. They all believed that the star was leading them to Jerusalem. This made perfect sense, because they had every reason to believe they were on their way to meet a king. They had no trouble gaining entrance to the palace. They looked rich, and that was enough to get them a royal audience. But the king they met was something of a disappointment. He was lumpy and rumpled, and he had terrible breath. His skin looked a funny orange color and sickly, as if his bile had gotten the best of him. The guards on either side of him shook in fear of their king, so much that their spears rattled against their shields. Without even comparing notes, the wise men knew he was not the person they were looking for. Do you know any other kings in the general area, they asked him. <laughs> he had been picking at his fingernails until then, letting them know how bored he was. But their question got his attention. He looked right at them for the first time. That was when he saw the star in each of their eyes. His own eyes grew perfectly round, like the eyes of a snake. The king asked the wise men if they would please excuse him for a moment. Then he stepped into his private chapel to confer with his clergy. They whipped out their old reference books, which smelled of wool, and told the king what he wanted to know. Yes, they said, there was something in the book of Micah about a new ruler for Israel, but nothing to get excited about. It was short. It had been there a long time. It was unlikely that the men in the other room were fulfilling that prophecy. But sure, why not? Send the wise men to Bethlehem to check it out, to save the king a little money instead of doing his own research. So that was what the king did. He gargled, combed his hair, and went back to tell the wise men they should go to Bethlehem at once with his blessing on one condition, that they come back and tell him who his successor was, so that he could um, send flowers to the new king. <laughs> his breath smelled like pine salt when he said it, which made the wise men feel queasy. They knew something was not right. But once they were back out in the night air, they could see the star in the sky again, and it set their minds at rest. They followed it right to the doorway of a one-room house in Bethlehem. It was a perfectly nice place, modest but well-built, though not the kind of place where they had expected to find a king. A dog was sniffing the wood pile under the eaves in hopes of a mouse. Someone was practicing the lute next door, going over the same notes again and again. A smell of dinner was still in the air. Wheat cakes cooked on a griddle, greased with sheep's fat. Lentils with lots of garlic and rice. The place looked so simple, they might never have chosen it themselves. But since the star had chosen it for them, they knocked. When the door opened, the couple standing behind it almost died of fright. Not that the wise men noticed. With their arms full of gifts, they crowded into the small space, bumping their turbans on the rafters and snagging their robes under rough furniture. All they could see was the baby, who was not afraid, and whose right eye shone with the same star they had seen before they ever left home. It was him, then, 
whoever he was. They did not have a clue, but they knew what to do. They got on their knees and they bowed their heads. Then they gave him things that they had brought for him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all the wrong things they could see now, things he had no use for. They should have brought him goat's milk, a warm blanket, something shiny to hang from his crib. But how could they have guessed? The child's parents were gracious. They thanked the strangers for their expensive gifts and held them up for the baby to see. Then, to the wise men's complete surprise, the child's mother picked him up and handed him around so that each of them held that damp, soft, giving weight in his arms. When they were finished admiring him, she took her baby back, nursed him, and put him to bed. Then, before the light coming through the window of the house had entirely gone out, the three wise men fell asleep right where they sat. In the morning when they woke, the wise men could not find their stars anywhere. They searched each other's eyes, but the stars were gone. Frantically, they looked in all the corners and under the chairs. The baby's mother even shook out his blankets, but still, no stars. Soon the wise men calmed down and said, never mind. We do not need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, something they could not lose. As much as they hated to, they added, they had better be on their way. They would not be going back to Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had woken from the same identical dream. Warning them to steer clear of the city. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, None of the wise men's old maps worked anymore. They would have to find a new way home. So the wise men picked up their packs, which were lighter than before. Then they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts he had given them. What in the world are you talking about, the baby's mother said, laughing. For the scent and weight and skin of a baby, said the first wise man, who had no interest in living on earth anymore. For this home and the love here, said the second wise man, who could not remember how to say it in the ancient language. For a really great story, said the third wise man, who thought that telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on hot coals. Then the wise man walked outside, stretched, kissed the baby goodbye, and went home by another way. I wonder, for those watching online, those here in the room, why didn't their old maps work anymore? And I wonder, what gifts the baby Jesus has given you? And I wonder, what will you do when you find a star in your eye? Thank you, God, for bringing this story into our lives and for bringing baby Jesus into our lives and for children everywhere. We thank you. Amen. Reading in the Old Testament and doing the national version from Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, 
to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, no my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, for before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And reading in the New Testament, the New Revised Standard Version updated, Matthew 3, chapter 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Well, John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. No sound. I 
exercise of their Now we're frozen again, and they don't have our room. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, and the ministrations of my life be pleasing to you, our rock and our weak. <laughs> On Thursday, I joined a conversation between August Moss the third. They were promoting Otis's new book, Dancing in the Darkness, which I hope we all have a chance to read together. During the conversation, Otis talked about a young boxer, a TJ, you're muted. Yeah, I think Vicki said they're working on it. Wow. And he credits Cassius's cornerman, Drew Bundini Brown, with turning things around. Bundini, as he was known, whispered in Clay's ear when he came back to his corner, shaken and rattled. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. That is where we are going today, where our scriptures lead us. Remembering who you are. Remembering what we came here to do. We are beloved children of God, with whom God is well pleased. Are we perfect? No. Does God expect us to be perfect? No. Does anyone expect us to go it alone? No. What does God expect? Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. And remember what you came here to do. What we were sent here to do. Can you hear yourself as the chosen in both Isaiah and Matthew texts, yes, you, all of you are God's beloved. All of us are God's beloveds. We, this nation, are God's beloved. Not to the exclusion of other nations, mind you. What if we all heard ourselves in this scripture? What if all people in all nations were servants of God? What if they knew it, they believed it, and they lived it? Receiving the blessing of God's spirit, we, all nations, would respond to our surroundings, not with hatred or greed, but with kindness and healing. My initial response to these passages was to focus solely on how God treats us. I nearly missed the verses that speak to how we treat one another. When we lived in Wisconsin while visiting friends, we overheard their girls in another room. At the time, they were probably three and five years old. A small voice said, I need a little help over here. The simple statement was very powerful, an admission of our dependence on one another. 
And we have never forgotten it, saying it ourselves over the course of years. In Isaiah, the verses that caught me by surprise, a bruised reed they will not break, and a smoldering wick they will not snuff out. In faithfulness, they will bring forth justice. They will not falter or be discouraged till we establish justice on earth. That is how we are to treat God's beloved children, all of God's beloved creation, so that all may know justice. Who sees the people that aren't obviously struggling? They are not homeless, they are not in prison, they are not orphaned, yet they are diminished, they are in need. They are not necessarily in need of something difficult, but they need to be noticed. They need a little attention, they need a little help over here, a little easing of the bruising, a little breath on the flame of their wake. Sometimes we get so caught up in the very real and very present larger issues of justice and peace that we don't see the bruised, the dimming, the failing ones. In our tight-knit communities, some remain unseen among us. When we are baptized or when we join this church community, we resolve to let God into our hearts, to let God into the very fabric of our lives. What does that mean? It means seeing the world through the heart that overflows with love. It means recognizing that justice is our work, not God's work, but our work through God. It means remembering who you are. It means remembering whose you are. It means remembering what we came here to do. Do not wait to be asked. Establishing justice on earth, like anything, starts small. It starts with paying attention. Pay attention to the often overlooked details. Pay attention to the often overlooked beloved children of God. Pay attention and see who needs a little help over here. Mm -hmm. Please stand in body your spirit and join in singing, O oh, Holy Dove of God Descending, in our black hymnal, number 285. <laughs> Join me in our prayer of confession. 
God, you show the partiality, yet we are not always thrilled and accepted. Forgive our sins and help us to see as you see that we may be accepted over the Lord's side. Through Jesus, our Christ. Amen. God forgives all our sins and promises to bring us to everlasting. Thank you to God. Now we, we quiet our minds and bring our hopes and dreams and fears and concerns and our joys to God, who is ever present and always listening. When Kenny came in this morning, Kenny Houghton, he asked for prayers for Reggie Nash, a housemate who was in the hospital. So we pray for Reggie to regain his health and his strength. We have others. Morning, Coulter. Good morning. Um, can we get Pat a microphone? First, for me, we have Amy Alexander. Um, We ask for prayers for the family of Roman Potter. Um, most of you know the way he's been following for, I think, just about everybody in town at some point. Uh, but he passed away Friday morning. So prayers for his remaining children. And we ask prayers for Myrna and Silas and Jane and the passing of Steve. Glad you were with us this morning. And also prayers for the crab trees this morning and Marsha. And prayers for Steve, who has been in the hospital, who is back out and in a, an assisted living situation for a while. Prayers. Are asked for John Wood, who was hospitalized after some recent heart surgery. Prayers for Herb Hodgkins, experiencing some health issues. And prayers for Barbara as she's recovering from her lumbar surgery. Prayers go out to Kathy's sister, Patty, recovering from her surgery. And for their friend, lifelong friend Kathy also struggling with cancer issues. Continued prayers for Roberta, Ginger and John Cunningham, and Betty and her stepdaughter Molly. Continued prayers for Margaret B. For Christopher's stepfather, Arthur, for Pat and Ed, for Kenny and Joy and David, for Liz and Jim, Continued prayers for Tamara and Andrew, and for Austin's cousin, Dean, and for Gary, for Bruce's sister, Lynn, and for Renata, and all the women she cares for. Go ahead, Patrice. We're a close family friend, Mr. Earl, in Louisiana, battling some health issues. Mr. Earl? Mr. Earl. Mr. Earl in Louisiana. Yeah. Continue our prayers for Eleanor's stepdaughter, Holly, for Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, and his family, and for Cynthia and for Nancy, and for all individuals and families experiencing addiction. And we pray for all caregivers that they are taken care of as well as good care to others. We pray for those affected by memory loss and those living with depression. We bring a microphone to Coulter. Pray for those traveling near and far and for all those with other mental health issues as well. Please pray for all people everywhere suffering from mental illness.
accept the silence and hear your own prayers and offer your own prayers. Trusting in your promises for the earth and all of her people, we bring you our prayers for the world, O oh God. We pray that all people and all creation may know they are your beloved. We pray for those who suffer, that they will know your love for them, and that we may, we may be bearers of comfort. We pray for your creation, that it may return to health and continue to nourish and nurture us. We remember those who have gone before us. We pray for those who are in death, that they may be at peace and your love for them. We praise and give you thanks, Holy One, for giving us spirit and breath. Hear these prayers spoken in silent, and hear this prayer as we join our voices together and pray the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. ourselves and one, one another as family in Christ. With us, the earth and the soil and the water and the creatures, they are our family too. In gratitude for this entangled life and for the creator who ushers us towards right, right relationship with one another, let us bring our gifts together.
Thanks, Thanks for your love, love that stretches beyond our comprehension. We bring our gifts, our love, our invitation to be co creators of life. May we be bold enough to believe it's true that you have called us, that you claim us, and that together we can do a new thing. In Christ we pray. Amen. You may remain standing body or spirit will sing as we gather in the world in our black and white. to your new journey to be sustained by the food and drink of this holy table. You come, come, all the way the stars stars of Christ. Christ. come in spite of all the detours of your life. You know, know God shows us every year, every, every day, day, in the oasis of safety and of rest, that we are escaping from dangers all around us, and are home by another way, which may be a new same place for a new Come, for there is always a table waiting. We come, come to share what strengthens us, us and receive the gifts of others. We remember that scripture tells us that people are fed on the roads of life. There is manna in the wilderness, door dash, meals on wheels, one innkeeper's unexpected kindness, and another's much later in Jericho, where a Samaritan inspiring the first warming shelter. But mostly, we remember that final evening with his disciples when Jesus shared with a meal, Jesus shared a meal with a friend, betrayer, denier, in a borrowed room, under fierce shadow, in the Passover tradition. So is bread and wine redefined as a promise to us and those we carry in the baggage of life that we pack for every road, both the tourism of life's joys and the paths we take through sorrow. This Holy Communion is the takeaway from all our stories on all our journeys. Give us strength and courage, Holy Green River, to cast our love into the deep and refreshing pool of your unconditional grace, 
so we may not hunger nor have chapter of hope, but all the hunger and thirst for the love of the Father of Amen. For all your paths lead you here, and all the light arising on your way home. Take this bread and eat. For every meal you share with others, and every sip you need of hope, take this cup and drink. things are ready.
as you start off with the sacrifice, try to get the most of stuff and eat the other two of your goats. Those who are escaping from the earth, trust in the gift, you go forth to share the kindness for this heaven. As we go out into the world this week, may love and strength be in your hands. May love and courage be in your hearts. May love and wisdom be in your minds. And may God go with you and work through you day and every day.